Okay, after we've selected the disk file and we've chosen install, this screen will come right up. So this is the first screen that we get once we start the image. And we're gonna choose Install Linux Mint. So just double click that icon. We're gonna walk straight through this. So we'll choose English, we'll choose the US keyboard. And we're not gonna choose Install Multimedia Codecs right now. However, that is a good idea if you're running this on your laptop or, or your workstation. Another good idea is if you are running this on your laptop to use LVM and encrypt the entire image. So please encrypt the entire drive if you're putting this on your workstation or a laptop where you think you might be storing anything like passwords or sensitive information. We're not gonna do that right now. We're going to do none and we're just gonna erase the disk and make it a straight up Linux Mint installation on my virtual machine. Now this virtual machine is once again inside of another Linux machine and this is my Linux hardware, uh, I guess, Linux operating system installed on my hardware. And uh, I'll go ahead and choose Dubai. No, let's go ahead and choose New York over there. Continue. And that just prevents us from having anything strange coming up. And over here, we're going to make this demonstration. Call this Demo01. Pick a username, demo, pick a password. And we can just do that one, two, three, four kind of thing. Log in automatically. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. So I mentioned the image that I'm using, or the machine I'm using, is a Linux Mint machine, and it does have whole disk encryption enabled, so it is encrypting the disk. And so encrypting a virtual machine on top of an encrypted disk is probably unnecessary, but I'll leave that up to you. So over here, we're almost done with the copy of the files. The installation's almost complete. Once the installation is complete, we're gonna want to update that kernel. So Let's go ahead and let this finish and get to the kernel update. It's almost done with the installation here. Once it finishes, it's going to say, do you want to keep using this image or reboot? And we're going to choose reboot. Okay, here we are. The installation is finished. So I'm going to choose restart now. We're going to remove the ISO from the drive. It says remove the installation media. So we'll go up to devices. This is actually optional and you can remove the disk from the virtual drive. After that, press enter. It will reboot into our new Linux Mint installation. Now remember, I did choose auto login and I chose a very simple password. So if you're setting a password of like password or ASDF, then there you go. It makes it a little bit easier, but a little bit less secure. So over here is check your video drivers. We're not going to worry about that right now, uh, but that is a good idea. If you are updating your kernel, go ahead and fix the video drivers first. Now, speaking of that, first steps, I'm going to go ahead and show one of the basic configuration options that I change, or several, about six options I change in Linux Mint before, yes, 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 go away, um, before moving on. So one of those is I select traditional, so And on the traditional, what it does is it allows me to start my applications. And you see I've got two icons down at the bottom. I'm sorry. The application shows that it's running down my panel two times as opposed to stacking on top of itself. I prefer that, but whatever you might want. Now, what we did have is both of these windows are directly on top of the other. So you can't even see the other one behind it. There's a way to fix that, and it's a way to fix that really fast. If you've ever noticed that problem, then go over here to settings, inside of settings, and they did fix this in 2021.1. Uh, um, over in settings, go to windows, behavior, and then choose automatic. You would imagine it would be automatic, automatically, but <laughs> it's not. It's chose. It's centered right as that comes. Uh, right as it's configured by default. Now over here there's another thing which is bring windows which require attention to the current workspace. Absolutely. Now I've got several workspaces that I use and when something like Telegram or another application is sitting on another workspace and I click on it, it takes me all the way to the other workspace and so I have to go back and forth. That's just a real pain in the neck. So 
I fix that there. Next, if we'll go and enable hot corners, so I enable that so I can see all the workspaces. Of course, I don't run Linux Mint in a virtual machine, except for this installation. I run it on native hardware, so I actually run only Linux for the last 23 or so years. So there you go. So we're running Linux everywhere. But over here, we have startup applications, some other things that if you want to go play with those, absolutely take some time, go check it out and uh, see which ones might give you a little bit better experience. But having done that, let's move back over to the kernel. Now we're going to go over to this little icon, the little shield icon. It takes about 30 seconds to appear. If you want to see how long that's going to take to appear, you can go over to the uh, administration, and I believe it's startup. Let's see. No, not administration. Let's see. What is it? It's uh, preferences. Preferences over there. And let's go to startup applications and we may see that update manager it's a 20 second delay right there so 20 second delay that if you want to change that you can change that but that's where we're going right now it says hey welcome to the update manager I'm just gonna say okay it's gonna look for the updates now this is a recent installation or a recent download of 20.3 so it is an older version it says, hey, you need to update the update manager, which, hey, we got to do it. So let's go ahead and update the update manager. Type in that easy password that you created at the beginning. That, of course, you will not forget to change it to a far more complex password if you are using this in a production environment. And we're going to let that update manager update. After that, you'll get to see the kernel update options, which are really, really wonderfully easy in Linux Mint. Okay, here we are. So it says, got a bunch of updates. I suggest that you install those updates before the kernel, but because this is a kernel video, we're gonna go over to View, and then Linux Kernels. So we went to the Update Manager, so I'll close this, just be on your desktop. Open that, View, Linux Kernels, and then it tells you there are risks. There are risks with updating your kernel. It may make your system not boot. If it does, select another kernel. Select. It's not the end of the world. You can go through and you can select a backup of your prior kernel. However, having said that, just in case something does go catastrophically wrong, please back up your, any important files that you have before you update your kernel. So I'm going to go ahead and say, don't show this again, continue. Now, over here, we can look at, wow, where are we at, right? Let's find out. Let's open a terminal. We'll make this a little bit larger, and we'll do a uname, uname-r. And we're running 5.4 right now, and if you look over the kernels, we are, per this, 5.15. So... We're over there. Of course, you can always do uname-a for all. Get everything in there. Uh, but it just makes it a little bit harder to find. It was like, okay, where is that kernel? There we go. Right? So there, there's that information from right above. So we can see that we're pretty far behind. Well, we don't have to install anything else. We can just install the latest one. It says yes. We want to do that. We're going to enter that uh, easy password we created at the beginning because we're going to have to enter the password like a gazillion times during their installation. So I recommend setting a really easy password like ASDF or something right when you install the system. And then as soon as you're done with all of your initial installations, then set your complex password. It'll just speed you up quite a bit. Okay, it's applying changes. Did not take long to uh, download the kernel. We can go through and look at it, unpacking the headers and everything else as it goes through, and it is installing the new kernel for our operating system. That's going to bring our Linux Mint 20.3, or Linux Mint 20, up to speed with the newest, best, and latest Linux kernel available for Linux Mint. So you're getting the same kernel that you might get on Linux Mint 21, on your older installation with Linux Mint 20. So you get to keep all of your features that you have on Linux Mint 20 without losing the features that unfortunately go away 
with Linux Mint 21. So we'll we'll keep those. If you wonder what those are, uh, those are some desktop features, some uh, GNOME changes, and getting borders on some windows and a couple of applications. Okay, going through and installing that kernel. I'm not going to switch to a local mirror, but now if we go over to Linux kernels, we'll need to reboot to activate this. It says that it is installed. So we're going to go ahead and choose reboot. So let's go over, restart our machine, and see if this new kernel actually works. And there we go. Uncheck that. Close the driver error. And let's check our kernel version. So I'll go over here and do a, a uname-r. And if you look at that, we are now at 5.15. So we have updated our kernel. Everything as far as the new kernel features are there. And that's how easy it is to update the Linux kernel. I hope that this helped. And I look forward to talking to you in the next video.